progressive issue you can think of. Gail, <laughs> thank right. you so much for being on the show tonight. Um, Gail is going to tell us a little bit about um, Tell us a little bit more about how the Richmond Progressive Alliance started, and then you're going to tell us about some of the current um, organizations that are running on that model now. Right, right. Well, first of all, thank you, Laura, for having me on the show. It's exciting to be here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so the Richmond Progressive Alliance, as the video um, mentioned, is uh, about 15 years old, and I was one of the co-founders uh, co of it, and as you mentioned, the first elected uh, corporate free candidate of the Richmond City Council uh, and a member of the RPA sitting on the council. And today we have that super majority. So it's really um, been quite a journey, uh, hard hard work, but we, we accomplished so much. Um, mm -hmm. The whole key to having these kind of um, changes in your city is to build an organization and run corporate free candidates for uh, elected office. And then of course, mm -hmm. um, changing the composition of the council is just the first step. The ultimate goal is to change the quality of life for the residents. So we were able to uh, do many things like um, in, raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. We reduced crime as was mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, 75 percent and we got 114 million dollars in additional taxes from Chevron we limited their pollution and we mm -hmm. beat their millions on the electoral field three and a half millions they wow. spent to try and defeat me and two other progressives in 2014 mm -hmm. and of course passed the uh, rent control law and so many others defended our immigrants and defended our public school system so those are just some of the things we were part of a we became part of a community choice energy program so mm -hmm. not only did we push back at the big bad oil company but we lifted up renewables so you do the pushback and you do the lift up of the good thing so that's um what the progressive alliance um is all about in mm -hmm. richmond and um people were excited to hear about us especially after we got that super majority and they were um you know, wondering how, how did you do it in Richmond? So I started giving presentations and, and that led to my Lieutenant Governor campaign. And um, my campaign for Lieutenant Governor is all about encouraging and hopefully inspiring others to um, build progressive alliances. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've gotten about 10, 12 new progressive alliances over the last year mm -hmm. um, that are modeled after to one degree or another after the RPA, the Richmond Progressive right. Alliance. So um, yeah, I'd love to share some information with you about these wonderful new groups that um, have emerged. Well, great. Yeah, every time I talk to you, there's a new one <laughs> added to the list. So, um, right. well, let's you know, let's let's start at the top. We've we've got a, a nice list here. We were going to talking about the South Bay Progressive Alliance, San Diego, South Bay, LA, Pacifica, North Coast, the mm -hmm. Del Norte, Concord, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and Alameda. That is a, a wide swath of our state and quite a lot mm -hmm. of diverse areas. Why don't we? Mm -hmm. um, Let's start at the top. Let's talk about the South Bay Progressive Alliance. You know, where are they okay. active and, and, and what are they doing? Sure, yes. Uh, before I do that, I, I forgot to kind of give you a little bit, and this is just a one sentence uh, lead in because the other organizations have followed the RPA in this mm -hmm. regard. We, we made sure we were diverse and inclusive and year round because the idea of um, not only supporting corporate free candidates in an election year, but also um, in non-election years to keep the local movement and alliance going is really important. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, a short description of what the RPA is, and mm -hmm. it has been um, taken up by many other organizations, as mm -hmm. you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the South Bay Progressive Alliance uh, was really one of the first um, new progressive alliances that occurred. Uh, they uh, they met with me early, I think, um, after the 2016 election, probably um, early in, in 2017. And uh, I gave them a little um, presentation and they just got to work right away. Mm -hmm. This past October, um, they had their official launch. I mean, all the time they were meeting and starting out with a small group, just as the RPA did, mm -hmm. and then expanding and um, they d I had the honor of speaking at their official launch in October. 
um, of 2017. And then I had the honor of speaking again at one of their meetings just recently in January, mm -hmm. um, where they elected a new steering committee. The uh, Originally, uh, groups often have the founding members steer the organization, but as the, it grows, they immediately started, uh, you know, having an election. And so they now have an uh, elected steering committee and they have action teams very similar to the RPA. We have action teams. So I know they have an election action team and a climate action mm -hmm. team. And um, they have, uh, I can't even recall what some of the own oh, education action team. Um, so, and they're endorsing two city council candidates oh, who are running without any corporate money. One is Omar Ves Vesquez and one is Shay, uh, I'm sorry, I can't recall her last name. S-H-A-Y is her first name. Shay mm -hmm. Franco, I think is, is her name. And mm -hmm. she's, um, they're both excellent candidates really out there to change. San they're running for San Jose city council. So oh, the South Bay is, um, uh, you know, really on its way to doing great things. Well, great. I'll be watching. That's where I grew up. So ah, that's, wonderful. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be pay attention to that, that particular group. Now, the uh, next on our list is the San Diego Progressive Alliance. Tell us yes. how they came to be. The San Diego Progressive Alliance was another very early Progressive Alliance that got going. Again, they wanted to hear from Richmond what, you know, how we did what we did. So I gave a presentation and they got to work right away as well. And um, right now they're, um, I believe they're supporting a candidate um, as well. I, um, I think her name is Monica Montgomery and um, they are, um, they're actually gonna be doing a town hall meeting that I'll be participating in on Saturday and uh, other, uh, I think Monica Montgomery may be there as well. Mm -hmm. So they're really, really moving forward um, with the whole issue of um, local political power. They get it, you know, and that's what we want. You know, we want them. They also, um, many of these organizations followed the bylaws or at least took what they could from the bylaws of the Richmond Progressive Alliance. And yeah. so that's, we say, why reinvent the wheel? Exactly, I was just gonna say that. <laughs> you know, everybody's got that. their own flavor though, of like they, they're talking yeah. a lot about developers down in San Diego. I know that's, that's, a, right. that's a huge is issue for them. So. Absolutely, yeah. So they've got, and they've got their, um, they've got their environmental issues as well in terms right. of uh, the uh, issues of nuclear plant, uh, right. nuclear waste, and right. such. Uh, right. So I've been keying into that issue and supporting activists that are wanting the um, mm -hmm. nuclear waste moved away from the San Onofre, right. um, you know, site. So yeah, it's it's exciting to see so many groups um you know really take off so right. another group in southern california that has taken off is the um, south bay los angeles people's alliance mm -hmm. and they're another group that are in um very concerned about environmental issues south bay la it has a lot of refineries mm -hmm. and they're fighting like richmond did you know to limit the pollution and to get better safety um, but they also understand the issue of running local political candidates, corporate free candidates. Mm -hmm. And what they did recently, which was very exciting, was hold a corporate free candidates forum that I had an opportunity to participate in, as did other candidates, local and statewide. All, you know, all of the candidates that were on, on the forum uh, had to be uh, corporate free and take no corporate donation. So that was really exciting. So um, yeah, the People's Alliance, the San, uh, San South Bay LA People's Alliance is mm -hmm. coming along really well. They they meet regularly as well. I like um, their description where they say yeah. sharing important political stories. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, that's a that's, that's a community that's that's a community feeling thing. I like that. That's right. You know, and one of the act key est activists there said, um, you know, they they're kind of autonomous each activist or various clusters of activists in the alliance kind of have their own autonomous uh kind of 
journey, I guess you would say. So they're trying to come together. And mm -hmm. I told them, as uh, we learned in the RPA, we don't have to, we have to agree on our values and on the big issues. Right. But, you know, conflict is good for an organization. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, it's good that you, you know, you have those brainstorming sessions. And if there's conflict, you work it out, majority mm -hmm. rules. And that's, mm -hmm. that's how it's got to be. So, um, you know, the minority has the right to express their opinion. But Anyway, they they're working it out, and I'm very proud that they're that they're doing so well. These are skills we have to have, being able to yes. figure stuff out and work with, <laughs> right. works with a team. What a concept! Exactly. So exactly. moving uh, up north to Pacifica, which is an area just south of San Francisco, they have the uh, Pacifica Pro Progressive Alliance. What's going on with them? Yeah, absolutely. So the Pacifica uh, Progressive Alliance is an organization that's kind of a compilation of different organizations, I think, um, to my understanding. They're just getting started on their endorsement process mm -hmm. for candidates. I myself uh, filled out their questionnaire about, you know, several weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and, um, you know, I'm, we'll, I'll hear from them, hopefully, with a positive in, uh, statement of endorsement. Um, and they, they've done things, uh, they're working on fair rent issues and environmental okay. issues and, of course, social justice. Uh, I believe, I, I know this, that early on, I think it may have been uh, about a year ago, they um, pushed to become a sanctuary city. Uh -huh. So that was, that was a big feat and, uh, you know, a big accomplishment. So mm -hmm. they're doing very well, and I look forward to continuing to work with them as well. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if Jilly Love is in the, oh, you are. The ne you'll like the next mm -hmm. one. The next one is the North Coast People's Alliance, which is up in the Humboldt uh, area. Yes, the North Coast People's Alliance is doing extraordinarily well. They're another organization that got their bylaws, have their endorsement process all worked out, and they have action teams um, and um, have a steering committee. They, they, they're really well structured. Um, I was up in Humboldt oh, it was a few months back, and they had a, a wonderful gathering of folks filled filled a, um, a community center. And uh, just last, just yesterday afternoon, um, I was able to uh, have a phone call into one of their meetings um, because they wanted to hear from me because they were going through their endorsement process oh, and okay. wanted to hear from me. And I was able to share a few thoughts by uh, phone and afterward they let me know that they endorsed me so i'm very oh. grateful to their for to the north coast people's alliance for their endorsement and for their great work um they yes. also are very concerned about environmental issues they're very big um on yes. um, medicare for all issues mm -hmm. as well because I mean, they have some nurses involved so single payer is a big issue for them and they're um you know they're they're very vari uh, a variety of activists mm -hmm. uh, and, and local elected work is really key for them. So right. I'm glad to hear that. So right. they're doing good work. They uh, they actually call out specifically too in their description how they really try to uh, transcend partisan politics. This is policy oh. over party. And I like absolutely. I like, I you know like that's that. that's one thing we stress. Um, that's how the RPA came together. We were mm -hmm. people from different parties: progressive Democrats. Greens, no party affiliation. We just came together with our values and set party aside. And we stress that when I talk to other uh, groups of activists who are considering an alliance, mm -hmm. and they get it and they yeah. um, have uh, followed suit. And that's yeah. that's really the way to go in this yeah. day and age. Yeah, I like that. Uh, moving into the more into the East Bay, we have the Panol Progressive yeah. Alliance, which is just yeah. doesn't even have a website yet. It's it's really brand right. new. Um, well, what's, actually, what's going on there? Yeah, so the Pinole Progressive Alliance has been, you know, going on for, a, a, I'd say, five or so months, five or six oh, okay. months. I just think they, Pinole is a small, smaller community. Um, mm -hmm. I, we uh, It's close to Richmond, so mm -hmm. we've worked with a lot of the activists before. Right. Like, I've worked with a lot of the adult school um, activists who wanted to make sure adult school got funded and it was getting cut by the school mm -hmm. district. So they're working on a lot of education issues, not only right. adult ed, but pushing back on the whole um, charter school movement, standing right. for our public school system. Um, they also, and so many of these groups have helped my campaign by signature gathering. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful for that. But they have met regularly in Pinole on a uh, month by month uh, basis. They have, they're also 
interested in library issues. They started out meeting in people's homes, which we always advocate, you know, start with a small group. Now they're meeting in their library community rooms. So uh, the group begins to grow little by little and you find yourself needing a bigger space. And uh, that's, that's how a, an alliance grows. Okay, perfect. Well, moving all the way up to the tippy top corner of the state, the oh, new progressives nice. of Del Norte, they're way, they're right up at the Oregon right. border, right on the Pacific. Um, right. Tell us about them. So, um, yes, the new progressives of Del Norte. Now, a lot of these groups, I might also add, and in, in including this group, um, emerged from originally being Bernie Crat groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed and that so, when I was going through their right, website. Like, right. Okay, so, here you go. <laughs> That's how the new progressives of Del Norte got started. Uh -huh. And um, I was I went up there um, a few months back and wonderful group of activists who are very concerned. Again, I mean, Californians are concerned about the environment and as we rightly should be, you know, we uh -huh. have, um, you know, we have a beautiful environment, but we also have a lot of uh, oil refineries and uh -huh. a lot of concerns. So they're concerned about, um, you know, slide prone areas um, right. on um, Highway 1 that need to be, uh, you know, built in a way or addressed in a way that is safe for um, the community. And, uh, of course, they're involved in um, issues of they're fighting back against Trump and they've had some rallies to fight back against white supremacist groups. And uh, just a, a wonderful, another, uh, there are, there's some artists in the community right. that are really lifting up the arts. So um, I, and they've been also education is a big mm -hmm. issue for them. And they pushing back against the privatization of our public school system that we, we know the Trump administration with, um, you know, his uh, appointee are um, pushing for this whole voucher right. system. Right. So th they also, I was very pleased to go up there and mm -hmm. uh, have a chance to hear from all of them. So great. they're doing great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, back to the East Bay, Concord. Yeah. That's another city near Richmond. Yeah. Um, and, and they seem to be uh, pretty concerned about income inequality and living uh, conditions. Tell us about uh, that. Yes. Yeah. Now, Concord Communities Alliance is uh, very much uh, a new organization. So they're, you know, they're doing the same thing that, um, you know, we are encouraging all um, organ all these organizations to do social justice, environmental justice, economic justice. Um, they have some unique issues around district elections. Their city council is uh, talking about uh, changing from at-large elections to district elections. So they're making sure that the underrepresented or the um, more um, low income population, right. the lines are drawn. So the low income populations have a voice and mm -hmm. have a strong voice um, in the process of the democracy um, electoral system. So they're doing great work and I look forward to um, meeting with them. I haven't had a chance to go to their meetings. Um, so I, I look forward to have that, have that opportunity. Oh, good. Well, th th this next one's exciting. This is the San Francisco Progressive Alliance, which had their intro meeting today. Were you there? That's right. No, I was not able to go to that today, but I did hear that they were having their public launch. Uh -huh. I um, I know they have been meeting um, for a while now, for a few mm -hmm. months anyway, but it is fairly new. And I believe they're working right now on issues um, of um, the mayoral race because oh, the... Oh, yes. Um, That's yeah, um, huge. Right. Right, exactly. It's a big issue. So they're they're looking at that and and you know figuring out uh, where they want to stand on that. So right. they're you know San Francisco is a community that's working hard and they have lots of housing issues and all that. So right. um, I look forward to uh, what they're going to do, and I'm sure uh, with the great progressive um, activists that are included in that, great things will occur. Right. They seem to be really a group of uh, a truly an alliance because they mention in their uh, statement the, a, a, an alliance of independent progressive organizations and individuals. So it sounds like they yeah. are really pulling together quite a few As diverse groups, which is exactly what we have to do. You know, we've got Absolutely. we have a lot. Of, the yeah. Progressive arena has a whole lot going on, and the more that we can coalesce around, you know, the you know, a strong group with a strong platform, the you know, the right. better. Right, absolutely. Yeah, Matt, we've done great. We've we've gotten <laughs> almost through. We've got one almost more to go. Um, okay, another East Bay Alameda Justice Alliance. Tell us what's going yeah. on. So the Alameda Justice Alliance is one of the organizations that is more of a compilation of organizations. Mm -hmm. um, they they may evolve into more of a, a group of uh, you know 
loose knit group of individuals and eventually more structured. Um, but right now, I believe it's they have a wonderful fair rent um, group working on rent control, very strong. Um, but they're also working with groups that are working on um, Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. um, and peace. So um, right now, I think there's four major groups that uh, are coming together to, and I was at their launch um, not that long ago in January, a wonderful, wonderful organization. Um, I had an opportunity to speak, but they also have their community leaders speak, which tell mm -hmm. the history of Alameda and wow. the struggles of, you know, of people of color. And mm -hmm. so it was very interesting. So I applaud oh, their work. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, that those are the major ones, but I think there was a few more that you wanted to give a shout yeah, out to. I just, yeah, I just, Yes, thanks. There was a couple more I wanted to mention. One is El Cerrito Progressives. Now, they're uh, slightly different in that they have chosen not to endorse or run candidates for local office. Um, you know, we're always pushing the corporate free candidates, so we encourage that. Maybe they'll do it in the future, but right now they're just working on issues, but doing good work. They, uh, El Cerrito became a sanctuary city, um, you know, in the past months because of their efforts. And they also um, are, um, they're, they have a scorecard for candidates. So they mm -hmm. kind of Put that out to their membership rather than okay. an, an endorsement and then there's also the um berkeley progressive alliance right. now uh they've been around for a few years and um they have um met with us in the richmond progressive alliance so you know we we've stayed in touch with them as well so okay. and there's okay. there's other things happening too so i'm sure more uh, alliances will start to emerge okay well before we go into you talking about your campaigns we do want to hear how that's going um mm -hmm. joseph do we have any questions from our studio audience uh, mm, uh, well i i have a question well yes. more of a, a tip type thing i have a friend who is currently trying to assemble a progressive club of some kind. it's at a community college level but he is often telling me that he's a bit overwhelmed at the prospect of uh, gathering people together and work group and such and you're someone who uh, created this amazing thing uh, the richmond progressive alliance and now you're going around helping create all these other organizations uh what kind of advice do you have for people who are just <laughs> good yeah, so to answer <laughs> to answer joseph's question um Yes, it is. It can be overwhelming at first. But the, the thing to remember is to get together with a, a small group. We started small in Richmond and uh, just meet frequently and regularly and never turn back. That's the thing. Know that, you know, these times are times that, you know, are, we're in a catastrophic free fall in this country and we have to start, you know, doing something and, and not standing on the sidelines. So know that there's going to be hard work involved and sometimes some ups and downs. Um, sometimes you'll, uh, not everybody will go to every meeting, but keep those meetings going and don't get discouraged. Um, it'll, it'll grow because people, people will, will, uh, will understand that it's needed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, Bram, uh, thank you for the super chat, ten dollars. It's very kind of you. Uh, you give us from the big banks that support fossil fuels and switch to public banking. Could you? I, you kind of broke up a little bit there. Let's try again. Do yeah. you have a plan to divest from the big banks that support fossil fuels and switch to public banking? So, oh, so you're saying, is there a plan or do yeah. I support a plan for that? Yeah, I have a plan. Do I have a plan? Yes. Well, first, <laughs> well, first of all, I definitely think that uh, cities should divest from the big banks. Um, you know, uh, there are people working on that, um, that are putting forward re resolutions that city council members are bringing to their cities and saying, um, you know, tell your city manager to look at what is going on with your investments in your city, take them away from, um, from the big banks, you know, put them in a community bank or, you know, or some social responsible investment. But if we have a public bank, a statewide public bank, we are going to be able to do so much. I mean, a public bank will allow us to prioritize affordable housing, to fund infrastructure, to um, give low interest loans to small businesses and worker co-ops um, because a public bank is um, built and run for the public good, whereas the big private banks are run for private gain. 
So um, we need to really have this. It, it, North Dakota for 100 years has had a statewide public bank and they're doing really well. So we, we, uh, I'm, that's one of my platform items. And LA is uh, working on its own citywide. They're considering doing a citywide public bank and even in the San Francisco Bay Area, various cities are considering doing citywide or regional public banks as well. Oh, perfect. I think you know Paul Stanton, Gail, and he's going to be coming on next month to talk about ah. uh, public banking on the show. So, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Great. That's a really interesting topic. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Um, okay. Bef uh, so we actually other? have another question oh, okay, uh, from great. Jeffrey. Will the progressive, well, I guess, uh, will the progressive alliance or do the progressive alliances stay in contact with each other? Oh, now okay. that that is a very good question because it, it kind of will segue into a little bit about my campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so my campaign for lieutenant governor is uh, has two wings. The first wing is to encourage these progressive alliances to build from the grassroots local political power, and uh, the second wing, of course, is to get elected because as lieutenant governor, I will network these progressive alliances together. Um, even now, I'm talking about a lot of them to one another, and, and to some extent, they are in touch with one another. But when elected, I'll be able to um, really continue this networking. We could hold, you know, con conferences and forums and um, do, you know, think tanks and progressive 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 work come together within the progressive issues that we all support. Mm -hmm. And then we could pressure the um, legislature and other state executives to do the, do the right thing because mm -hmm. one elected official can't do it, but as an organizer, cause you know, as uh, when I was mayor, I remained an organizer. And when I'm Lieutenant governor, I'll remain an organizer mm -hmm. and I will um, mobilize people or work with them. They'll be mobilizers themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's how we'll get single payer Medicare for all and free public college. The Lieutenant Governor sits on the um, UC Board of Regents and the California State University Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. So meeting and mobilizing with students to get free public college, mm -hmm. um, use that seat that the Lieutenant Governor sits on to raise the profile of that issue. Um, you know, and uh, the Lieutenant Governor sits on the Economic Development Commission, raising the issue of the public bank through that seat. Right. So there's many, many ways that this organizing project, bringing together the progressive alliances and all the other great progressive groups um, can happen with somebody who's working side by side with them. Right. Okay, uh, one last question. Does Gail have plans on coming to Ventura County or, do, or does she already? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have been to Ventura County. Um, I visited the um, Ventura, um, our revolution group who endorsed me, I'm proud to say. And um, I was actually on a radio station out there, but I, you know, the campaign has about, well, until June, there's three, three, three or four months, February, mm -hmm. March, April, May, <laughs> yeah. Left. So I, I expect to be doing a lot of traveling and hopefully I'll get in the top two and then go till November, Yes, um, which will mean I'll keep traveling. So, yes, I would love to come to uh, Ventura again. Mm. Perfect. So. Tell us um, tell us about your latest uh, endorsement. Yeah, so I'm very excited to announce that I have the endorsement of Bernie Sanders, our Revolution National Organization. So I, there's really uh, only five California candidates that the um, our Revolution National Organization has endorsed so um, mm -hmm. so far. So I'm proud to be one of them. Um, I also have the endorsement of 34 local California our revolutions, and I expect more to come, as well as Democratic Socialists of America chapters and Green Party chapters, um, and just many peace and justice groups. So, um, yeah, but I'm very this this getting this national organization yeah. our revolution is is a big endorsement, a and I'm very grateful for them to see that. Uh, what my campaign is doing and i credit my campaign team and you know all the supporters uh, that have gotten us this far oh fantastic so tell us how can people get involved in your campaign what do you need most and how can they find you 
Well, because we don't take corporate donations, um, we depend on individuals to uh, to both fund the campaign with lots of small donations, as Bernie did, but also to be out there, you know, spreading the word. So I would say mm -hmm. right now, one of the biggest things we're asking people to do is um, volunteer, and they could go to galeforcalifornia.org backslash volunteer, mm -hmm. and they could sign up for um, phone banking and um, text banking and canvassing, and um, not so much for asking for money, but for identifying uh, voters that will, you know, sharing the message of the campaign sure. and asking people to vote for me or to, you know, commit to voting for me. And then they spread the word from from that point on. Mm -hmm. So we have some really strong strategies, a field campaign up and down the state. But mm -hmm. of course, people could also donate. Um, and mm -hmm. we really would appreciate that. Um, so they could go to um, you know, the, the website, galeforcalifornia.org and donate. But mm -hmm. um, any volunteer work uh, would be greatly appreciated. It's exciting. You can get people together and have a pizza party while you're phone banking or right. texting. And, um, you know, just really, it's a great way to um, build, a, build a movement, really. Yeah. Well, you've been such an inspiration with all of these alliances that you are building, not just in your, your your home region, but all over the place. And that really is what a statewide role like this uh, can be. And we're mm -hmm. excited at having someone in lieutenant governor role who really will actually do all those things. Well, I just I do want to say that, you know, while I'm encouraging and hopefully the Richmond story is inspiring people that yes. when you fight, you can you do win. You know, when you fight, you win. But um, it's people are autonomously running their own uh, progressive alliances and, you know, doing their own work. And that's important, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm grateful mm -hmm. that that is indeed happening. Well, we were so grateful that you came on to help us uh, parse all this out. We hope that you find time to come back again. That's oh, I would love to, Laura. You guys are doing, doing great work, so uh, keep it up on your end. <laughs> thank you. Before you go, Gail, I want to uh, tell this to you uh, online, uh, live, and with all the progressive organizations, if you guys drop by, mm -hmm. that we could really help you organize if we got together and, and, and produced online forums with this technology. So I'd ah. love to be in touch with you and let's let's help amplify your voices. You know, you don't have mainstream media to work with, but you do have some independent media that is, is here. So I'd, I'd love to coordinate and help uh, help amplify your voice, uh, Gail, whatever you need. Well, yeah, it sounds like you're wanting the Progressive Alliance's key people to yeah. be in touch as well. Right. Yes. yes. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. So I, I, w I will definitely give you some of the key people and uh, you know, uh, we can carry this forum of Progressive California further. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you.